Hello, my name is Danielle and I'm the Conservation and Youth Education Specialist with the Colorado State Forest Service. Today we're going to be doing an activity from Project Learning Tree called Looking at Leaves. You can find this activity in PLT's Nature Activities for Families. This is found at plt.org, clicking on Resources and then going to Free Activities for Families. Educators can get the full-length version of this activity in PLT's Environmental Education Guide for Pre-K through 8. Learn more about this guide and the upcoming trainings with professional development at coloradoplt.org. Have you ever walked through your neighborhood and noticed that the leaves on the trees come in many different shapes? sizes, and colors. Looking at leaves can help us make observations with different characteristics that are used to identify what the trees are. In today's activity, we'll be collecting data to help us do exactly that. To begin with, we're going to start by making a nature journal. For this, you'll need three to four sheets of paper, a stapler, and something to write with. You'll start your nature notebook by taking your paper and folding it in half horizontally. If you would like, you can add a cover as well with the title and the author. To secure your notebook, you'll take your stapler and staple right along the inside binding. Once you open things up, the first page will be our table of contents and the remaining pages will be where we'll add our data. The next thing we're going to do is set up the pages inside of our nature notebook. You'll notice for each of these, I've recorded the same characteristics on each page. This will be used to compare the different types of leaves that we'll find. On the top half of each page, I've left it blank. Here's where I'll add my leaf sketch or leaf rubbing. The bottom half of the page is where I'll record my characteristics. We'll start out by identifying our tree as either a conifer or a broadleaf. Conifers have seeds that develop inside of cones. They typically have needles that are evergreen all year round. They include things like pines, spruces, hemlocks, and firs. Broadleafs include things like oaks, maples, beeches, and aspens, and they have broad, flat leaves. They lose all of their leaves every year and are also known as deciduous. The next thing we'll take a look at is whether our leaf is simple or compound. When most people think of leaves, they think of simple leaves. Simple leaves have only one piece to them. Maple, oak, Aspen, sycamore, and many other trees have simple leaves. Compound leaves, on the other hand, are made up of several leaflets. Ash, walnut, and sumac trees all have compound leaves. The next thing we're going to take a look at is shape. The overall shape of the leaf gives clues to the identity of the tree. They can be long or slender or oval shaped. Also, needles come in different shapes. Some are flat and others are rounded. These shapes of overall leaves can differ in many ways. For example, the tips of leaves may be notched, pointed, rounded, tapered, and so on. And the bases of the leaves may be squared, rounded, heart-shaped, and so on. After making observations about the leaf shape, you'll want to note its color. The next thing we'll take a look at are the leaf's margins. 
the edges or margins of leaves can also provide clues to the tree's identity. For example, some leaves have teeth or are serrated along their margins, while some leaves are lobed, and some leaf margins are entirely smooth. We'll also want to take note of the leaf's texture. Some leaves are completely hairy, others have hairs only on one side, and others are completely smooth. Leaves may also be thick or thin, rough or waxy. Another characteristic to identify a tree is the way its leaves are arranged on the twig. Many trees have alternate leaves that are staggered along the twig. Other trees have opposite leaves that grow in pairs along the twig. And some leaves grow in whorls or a world. The leaves on pines, spruces, firs, and other needle leaves also grow in patterns. For example, leaves on pines may grow in clusters of two, three, or more. The next thing you'll want to take note of are the overall leaf observations. Are the leaves on the tree similar to each other? Can you notice any differences? You'll also want to record other tree characteristics. These include things like fruit, flowers, bark, and cones. These characteristics also are helpful in identifying your tree. Now it's time to head outside. When you head out, make sure to grab a couple of things. You'll want to have a bag to collect your leaves in, your nature notebook, something hard to write on. I used a piece of cardboard with a clip to make my own clipboard. Something to write with. And then if you're doing a leaf rubbing, a dark colored crayon. When you're outside looking at leaves, whenever possible, see if you can collect your leaves directly off the ground. When making your observations, the first thing we're going to take a look at is is our tree a broadleaf or a conifer? Make sure to record that in your nature notebook. You'll also want to know if your leaf is simple or compound. Take a look at how many leaf pieces are coming off of the main leaf stem. In this example, my broadleaf is compound. The next thing you'll want to take a look at is the overall shape. In my broadleaf, I've noticed that it's round in the middle with points at both ends. My conifer is long and slender. You'll also want to notice the color. You can take a peek at my broadleaf. It's a nice vibrant green, while the conifer is a little bit lighter with some brown mixed in. The next observation we're going to make are the margins. On the broadleaf, you'll notice a jagged edge, also known as serrated, whereas my conifer is very smooth. Another observation to be sure to include is the texture. My broadleaf is waxy on one side, and the underneath is soft and hair-like. When I notice the texture of my conifer, I notice that one edge is raised and rounded, while the underneath is flat and grooved. 
Another thing to note is the leaf arrangement, or how it's connected to the twig. In my broad leaf, you'll notice that they attach in a similar area, with some of the leaf stems being opposite of each other. The leaf arrangement in the conifer is in clusters, with needles of two being clumped together in one spot on the branch. You'll also want to make overall leaf observations. In my broad leaf, you'll notice that the leaves are very similar in color. And for the most part, with a few small exceptions, they're of similar size. On my conifer, I have noticed that there's some brown needles mixed in with the green ones, and those tend to be a little bit shorter. Now let's take a look at some other tree characteristics. On my broad leaf, when I zoom into the bark, I notice that it's long and shaggy. On my conifer, when I zoom into the bark, I notice that it's very rough and jagged. Remember the top part of your page is for a leaf sketch or a leaf rubbing. To do a leaf rubbing, you'll want to take your leaf and turn it so the veins are facing upwards. So slide your leaf underneath the page so as much of it as possible fits and then you'll take your crayon and gently rub back and forth. Pretty soon an impression of your leaf should start to appear. Go ahead and start exploring leaves from other trees in your neighborhood. Be sure to fill out your nature notebook as you go along. You might find it helpful to start out with about three to five, but as you get going and really looking at leaves, you'll discover there's lots of differences and types around. Once you've completed your data in your nature notebook, take a look at the different pages and compare and contrast your leaves. What similarities do you notice? What are the differences? You can also use your nature notebook to find similar leaves throughout your neighborhood. If you like this activity, we hope that you check out more by visiting the resources section at Colorado PLT. Thanks again for joining us, and we hope you've had a great time looking at leaves.